All right, now this should be a very easy equation to solve without a calculator for all of you out there that uh, have some basic understanding of linear equations or how to solve basic algebraic equations. Now, uh, what's going to get people in trouble here is that we have fractions and decimals. But if you are studying algebra, well, you should already know something about fractions and decimals. So don't be afraid of this problem, and let's see if you can solve this without a calculator. All right, so the actual equation is 3 fourths m minus 1 is equal to 1.75. All right, so once again, no calculators, but uh, if you think you know the answer, put that into the comment section. I'll show you the correct solution in just one second, then of course I'm going to show you exactly how to solve this equation without a calculator. All right, so let's take a look at the answer. The correct answer here is m is equal to 11 thirds. All right, now if you got this right and you did not use a calculator, well, you are definitely going to get a happy face and an A+. Plus. And if you're like uh, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I know basic algebra, but uh, I still don't like working with uh, fractions and decimals. Well, you know, uh, this is uh, understandable because we use our calculators so often that if you don't practice uh, basic math skills, you will lose them. All right, so let's go ahead and get into this problem right now. So what do we have to do here? Well, you have to make a decision, okay? So here... We have a fraction and here we have a decimal. So we either have to work with all fractions or all decimals. Now, uh, some of you might think it's easier to convert, let's say this 3 fourths into a decimal. You have 0.75m minus one is equal to 1.75. If you felt that was easier and you did that approach, that's perfectly fine. But for me, I'm going to suggest that most of you out there uh, convert uh, uh, this decimal here, 1.75, into a uh, fraction. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, kind of approach uh, the problem this way. We're going to work with all fractions. Of course, that just makes everyone excited because they love fractions. Now, if any of this so far is kind of complicated, if you're like, ah, I need help with this, I'm going to suggest uh, checking out like my pre-algebra course in my math help program that will definitely help you out. Also, I have a ton of additional videos on my YouTube channel that go over basic equations as well. All right, so let's take a look at this decimal here, 1.75. And what we need to recognize is that 0.75 is equivalent to the fraction 3 fourths, okay? And even more so, we need to understand that 1.75 is the same thing as 1 plus a 0.75. If we added up these two numbers, we would get 1.75. So we just want to kind of uh, pull these two parts of this number apart so we can take the 0.75 um, part and write it as a fraction. Now, if you just uh, said, oh, well, this is just equal to one and three fourths, that's perfectly fine because that's where I'm going as well. Now, some of you might be saying, well, how would I know that 0.75 is equal to three fourths? Well, there's some uh, common decimals values that you shouldn't know their fraction, uh, the equivalent fraction for those respective decimals. Things like 0.25, uh, which of course is one fourth, 0 0.5 is one half, 0 0.75, uh, three fourths, etc. So you know some of these more very very basic and common uh, decimal values you should hopefully know. All right, so let's go ahead and continue on. Let me erase this right here. So we have three fourths m minus one is equal to one plus three fourths, which of course is the same thing as one and three fourths. So now finally we have an equation here, all in fractions. All right, so what do we need to do? Well, when you're solving an equation, uh, basic linear equation in algebra, what you wanna do is get all your variable terms on the left-hand side. So you can see here, the only variable term we have is 3 fourths m. It's already on the left-hand side, but you wanna get all your numbers on the right. And here, we have this negative one. We need to kind of get that over to the other side of the equation. So how do we make that happen? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at that right now. Okay, so anytime you wanna move anything from one side of an equation to another side of an equation, this is a really, really important algebra concept. But effectively, the, uh, the kind of the general rule is. Now, before we continue on, please consider hitting that subscribe button. 
This really does help me out on YouTube. And if you're going to do that, hit that bell notification as well. Now, the problem that we're doing involves uh, kind of first uh, year algebra. So if you need help with pre-algebra, Algebra 1 courses like that, check out uh, those courses of mine. You can find the links of those in the description of this video. So again, that would be pre-algebra, Algebra 1, or maybe even my Math Skills Rebuilder course. Okay, so let's go ahead and get back to the problem. You can do anything you want to an equation as long as you do it both uh, equally to both sides. So if I want to get rid of this negative one here on this side, I'm like, I, you know, I don't want to um, have any numbers on this side of the equation. I just want my variable term here. Well, I can uh, accomplish that by adding a one to it because a negative one plus one is zero basically makes this disappear from this side. But if I add a one, to this side of the equation, I must add a one to the other side of the equation to keep this in balance. Always think of an, an equation as kind of like a teeter-totter or a seesaw, whichever you might, or a scale, however you want to think about it. So if you put a one right here, obviously this is going to get that scale. It's going to be heavier on this side, but if we put a one right there, it stays in balance. Okay, so that is a main concept of solving equations in algebra. You could do whatever you want to both sides of the equation as long as you do it equally. Okay. So, or you could do, whatever, let me just say that again, you could do whatever you want for the most part uh, to an equation as long as you do it equally to both sides. Okay, so now let's go ahead and add down in a column manner. So 3 fourths m plus nothing is 3 fourths m. Negative 1 plus 1 is 0. We don't need to write a 0, that just kind of disappears. And then 1 and 3 fourths plus a 1 is going to be 2 and 3 fourths. All right, so this is where we're at right now. We have two, I'm sorry, three fourths m is equal to two and three fourths. So let's go ahead and take this now to the next step. Okay, so basically we're down to what we call a one step equation. Effectively, you just need to, uh, to do one thing here and we can solve for the variable m. But we need to make our life a little bit easier here because we're going to have to do some multiplication and or division. Uh, depends on how you uh, think about this particular problem. But here I have a proper fraction, which is where the denominator is bigger than the numerator. But this is a mixed number fraction. Okay, So in other words, I have 2 and 3 fourths. I need to convert this thing or write this thing as an improper fraction. So how do I do that? We just take 4. Uh, if you recall, 4 times 2 is 8. And then you add 3. Okay, so 8 plus 3, of course, is 11. And you're going to write that over 4. So you need to understand how to work with fractions and write a mixed number fraction as an improper fraction. Basic, basic uh, skills that are, uh, you know, absolutely critical for your success in algebra, i.e. working with fractions. Again, if you need to brush up on how to solve basic equations and how to master fractions, just go directly to my pre-algebra course. You'll be very happy that you did. All right, so here, let's just go ahead and take a look where we're at. Now we finally got this equation to 3 fourths m is equal to 11 fourths. Okay, these are the same thing, but now we have this as an improper fraction. Now, how do we solve for m? Well, we want to get m by itself. So uh, basically, we want to solve for m, right? m is equal to whatever the solution is. But really, there's a 1 in front of that m, 1m, but we just write that as m. So how can I accomplish, I have a 3 fourths m, how can I get this into a 1? What can I do to 3 fourths to make it into 1? Well, just remember, if you multiply by the reciprocal, take whatever, whatever fraction is in front of this variable and flip it upside down, that, of course, would be 4 thirds. And then when you multiply, look what happens. You're going to have uh, 4 times 3 is 12 over... 3 times 4 is 12. 12 divided by 12 is 1. Okay, or all of these cross cancel. So now you're going to have 1m. That's what you want. Okay, that's what we uh, want to accomplish. But what was the rule that I just mentioned about algebra? Whatever you do to one side of the equation, you have to do the exact same thing. So here I'm multiplying this side of the equation by 4 thirds. So I must multiply this side of the equation by 4 thirds as well. And when we do this, you can see the 4s cross cancel, and it just leaves us with 11 over 3. So m is equal to 11 thirds. Okay, so I hope this video helped you out. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. 
Now, if you need additional help in algebra, check out these courses right here. So pre-algebra is uh, for those of you that are studying basic algebra. But uh, if you are further along in mathematics, then you may want to check out my Algebra 1 or Algebra 2 courses. Now, my Math Skills Rebuilder course is a review course. I cover basic math, algebra, and geometry in this course. I'm going to leave links to all these courses in the description of this video. All right, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.